Is it Lenny there? Okay, yeah, I think they do. Okay. All right. Got it. Let's see if I can go ahead and... Okay, from the beginning. All right. Okay, so I think we got it. Okay, so... Um, my name is D.R. Ingram, one of the associate directors of the Career Development Center. And just again, to start off, I know we're talking about this all already, but please forgive me if that is my voice or if I'm, you know, a cough here or there or sniff or sneeze, baby. Um, you know, I'm just trying to um, ho hopefully on the road to feel better. But um, like I said, just just please bear with me when, uh, if that, that happens. Um, Basically, today is just like with the title here, Career Services, Graduate Students in AWCPE. Basically, what I want to do today, and I'm going to try not to take too much of your time, is I just want you to be aware of, of services or, or resources that we have that might be helpful whenever you begin to start your job search, Okay. A lot of times you just not, may not be aware of what's there. So there might be a couple of things that, that will be helpful. And I want to try to uh, share those things um, um, today. Um, first, just to start off with, of, of course, one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, meetings. Uh, most of our meetings right now are, are virtual. One of the, I think the best way to schedule a, a meeting uh, with me is the schedule through EPAC. Now you you probably have heard about EPAC. I'll talk a little bit more about EPAC a little later. Um, but uh, e everybody has an EPAC account. Um, EPAC, uh, one of the functions is to be able to go into EPAC and schedule an appointment. Uh, you should be able to pull my name and, and see um, what uh, days I have um, available as far as counselor is concerned. OK, so that's one way. Another way is set up actually through your graduate student services um, in, on, in the College of Education. I think in, in uh, coordination with Dr. Cap, Cap is, uh there's a sign up genius. And, and it's really for a particular Tuesday and, and a Friday, uh, two days out of each month. It came out of in the pre-damic pre-pandemic days when I used to go over the poll to do uh, drop-in hours. But again, this is just another vehicle to use. I would certainly suggest that when you use this, sign up in advance week or weeks um, um, in advance. Uh, I think that gives me the opportunity um, to connect with you if I need to, to kind of clarify some things before we actually meet, because I really believe in um, when it comes down to the session, to use our time wisely and, and be efficient because you're busy. You know, I know I've got, you know, everybody's got things to do. So I want to make sure that that time is put to good use. Uh, same day, sign ups, not um, try not to do to, to do those. So if let's say if that particular Tuesday is there and there's a slot and you sign up on Tuesday, I would um, encourage you not not to do that, but to sign up uh, in advance. And then, of course, if uh, push comes to shove, this is my email address, dringram at ncsu.edu. So if you want to just send an email um, and you're having troubles trying to get on the schedule, we, we can work something out. That That's that's fine. OK, so I want to make sure that, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's not a way that you can't reach me. You, you should be able to connect uh, uh, with me. Now, some of those meetings. Uh, most of the time, graduate students in college of education, they're meeting about things like the uh, resume and CV. And I'm not trying to go into a whole workshop about CVs and, and, and resumes. But one of the things I do want to, to show is, you know, uh, definitely just a, a basic difference. Because sometimes resume and, and CVs can be used, that term, those terms can be used interchangeably. And I just want to make sure that individuals understand there is a difference. They, they're both use for the purpose of, you know, it's a career document when you're seeking an opportunity with an employer, but there are some differences. 
So when we're looking at resumes, just like we look on the left side, uh, many of you will be using a resume and that's going to be used for positions and jobs in the industry. Uh, uh, and just like it says, work outside of academia. And I would be even more specific to say, work outside of faculty positions in academia. Because let's say, for example, in my office, if um, when individuals are applying to become a career counselor, they're not gonna use a CV, they're gonna use a resume. Um, so it's also concise. That's the term that comes to mind. It's gonna be tailored, concise, uh, it's going to provide relevant experience, skills, just like it uh, states here. Um, it can be probably, you know, it might be a, a page, could be a couple of pages. That's that's fine. Um, and also, depending upon the areas of interest, if you have more than one area of interest, uh, you might have more than one version of this document, depending upon what you're trying to apply for. And of course, at the end, if you have to, if you have to move things around, depending upon what you're applying for, you're free to do that. On the other side, when we're talking about the CV, now I think more so we're talking about, again, for faculty uh, positions, this is used for research and teaching positions for the university or research setting. Certainly it's longer. There's no limitations as far as the amount of pages, uh, especially if you think about a faculty member who's, who's, who's been in the field for a number of years, it's no surprise to have 15, 20 pages and so on, okay? It's a very comprehensive look at your academic life and your your, your career life. Uh, and you can kind of continue to add on. And I'll also point this out before I go to uh, the next slide. Another thing about the CV that distinguishes it from a resume is on the CV, you're gonna have a resume, I'm sorry, uh, a research portion, teaching portion, and you're bound to see publications and presentations, okay? So that's another way to distinguish between resumes. Industry employers, they're not gonna, you know, publications and presentations, they're not gonna really pay any attention uh, to that. Um, oh, and also you see at the top, some of you will probably have, let's say you're trying to prepare a research proposal statement or teaching philosophy, uh, we're fortunate to have on, uh, uh, on contract a professional editor. And um, basically, I can pass along that information to professional editor. They have a chance to, to edit, um, put updates, send, it, send that document back, and then I send it back to you. We've had already like a couple of, of, of graduate students in education who've had that done and very, very pleased with, with, uh, with the service. So whenever that time comes and you're preparing that type of document, uh, we also have that in place. So DR, may I ask a question? Is that free for all graduate students? Oh, free as far as, um, yes, yes, yes. There's no cost. Perfect. Yeah, so, no, no, no cost at all. Yeah, how long does it take for the editor to turn back? It is usually within, um, within uh, I would say 48 hours. Oh. You know, of course, if they have like a doctor, but see, everybody's not going to send something at the same time. So mm -hmm. let's, let's say, you know, I might get a student who uh, wants someone to take a look at um, my uh, research proposal mm -hmm. and I can send that to them and they look at that particular document and can get it back within mm -hmm. two days. And then I send it back to the student. We're done. OK. Awesome. So, so I don't see that as, you know, of course, I don't think it'll be a situation where it's like, five or six in the queue that's, you know, it's probably going to be like one at, at a time, uh, depending upon when people need that. Cause everybody's not going to, may not necessarily need that, um, um, that, yeah, that service. That makes sense. How uh -huh. about the diversity statement? Can we also. Yeah. And usually any kind of you know, like statements like that, just mm -hmm. definitely take a look at it and, and put notes, um, edit uh, what, what's needed and then send it back. And um, is there a way that we can set up a Zoom meeting with the editor to make sure that we understand their comments? Well, I don't know about the Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, um, definitely, I know they said that if there's any particular questions, I, I would mm -hmm. probably be like the middle person. Okay. So, so just, just let me know what it is. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Now, definitely another document of cover letters. Again, there is a difference. When you talk about industry, non-faculty, 
and faculty and uh, uh, research side. On the industry, your, your traditional cover letter, of course, you're going to have whenever it's a, a formal cover letter, yes, you're going to have your contact information, you're going to have your date, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to have the address, uh, uh, well, the destination of the letter, and of course, it's going to be addressed to a specific uh, uh, individual. And as you see here on the, on, on the left side, on the industry um, side, in your intro paragraph, always going to include things like why you're writing. You're writing because you're interested in said position. Make sure that you clarify what that position is and how you found out about it. You know, was it through a, a website? Um, maybe it was someone who's working in um, in the area where at that with that employer and they tell you about it. And that's an opportunity to name drop. That's fine. Um, how you found out about the opportunity and uh, certainly your current status. You know, are you uh, currently a uh, second year graduate student or mid, um, in the process or I will be graduating this May? So you want to kind of give that status so they have an idea of where you are uh, as far as graduation is concerned. And then kind of like that overarching statement about uh, why you're um, a qualified person for this position. So that kind of transitions into the main portion. And all it is is pretty much, again, depending upon each individual, um, and your um, and your experience and what you're applying for. It could be a, a large paragraph. It could be a couple of several paragraphs. But for the most part, it's a way for you to talk about, effectively talk about the experience, skills, uh, knowledge that you have that match what that position is looking for. Okay. And then, of course, at the end, you're able to close that, uh, uh, have the closing paragraph, uh, sometimes it might you might reiterate your interest in the um, position and that you're looking forward to talking with them further. Now, on the faculty side, the intro and the closing paragraph are pretty much the same, but the body is going to be different because in faculty positions, they're going to usually expect, <coughs> excuse me, they're going to usually expect current paragraph about your current research. They'll look for a paragraph about future research, paragraph about teaching, and also service. Okay, so that will be kind of like the main difference um, um, between the two. But that's something that you can come in. Definitely, we can be, um, bring that in when we'll um, uh, take a look at, at that document. Other things, uh, I think about career fair prep. Some of you might belong to uh, professional organizations affiliated with your program where there might be conferences. I know some of you are talking about a conference, you know, tomorrow um, where they might have an event where there are potential employers or might even be a conference where there is something like a fair. So you always want to be ready with what we call, and you all have heard of, of it, um, ele elevator uh, pitch, or elevator speech. <clears throat> some of you have used it before. And we'll really with this elevator speech, it really should not extend beyond 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. And during that time, you have the opportunity to briefly introduce yourself and then um, maybe bring up a point or two about why you are highly interested in a particular position or field and what in a point or two about a strength that you bring to the table for that field or position and can do that again no more than, than 45 seconds it kind of puts me in the mind i don't know if you've ever been in an interview and sometimes the initial question might be tell me about yourself and i know that question can sometimes be awkward but with that question to respond to it same thing shouldn't go beyond 30 seconds to 45 seconds and kind of pretty much saying some of the same things but you always try to bring it back full circle to why, you know, what you bring to the table, how, it, how that's going to benefit the company and that, that or the organization or the school. And that's why you are uh, interviewing for, for this position. Then they talk, take long. I've had a number of a couple of mock interviews with students where on purpose, on purpose, I decide not to interrupt. OK, and I ask that question. Tell me about yourself. And without interrupting, I've had students to talk for about 10 or 15 minutes. 
Okay, that's not the time to do that. You know, then I think it's it's nervousness, and I also try to think about everything that that they can in regards to how they, why they're qualified at the beginning. And you got the rest of the uh, interview for that. So just kind of give me just a brief kind of like a highlight, you know, to respond to. And that's what the elevator uh, pitch does. So help and practice in, in, in doing that. Definitely interview prep, any particularly helpful tips. These are things that we can kind of, um, we can talk about in the session. Mock interview. Uh, I just talked, you know, I just mentioned that. That's one of the things I, I enjoy doing, having an opportunity to do mock interviews with, with students. Uh, that should be like a longer session. Oh, by the way, I, I failed to mention most of the um, uh, sessions are 30 minutes long. But with a mock interview, I'm looking for that to be a little bit longer so we have a chance to do the interview and then provide feedback. Okay. And one of the things I'll, I'll make this note here, and I'm sure that you know, as graduate students, um, when it comes to, to this, this should be something where you prepare and practice interviews uh, way before an interview is scheduled. Okay, uh, no matter how good we, we think we are, it's always good to prepare and to practice. And what I find a lot of times with students is they make the mistake of not doing that. And they're in the season of the job search to apply and hear back from employers and get interview uh, requests for an interview. And you know that most of the time when a company or organization will reach out and say, hey, we want to interview you, usually it's within a couple of days. And so now you're frantic trying to, okay, I got to get ready for this interview. So that's why it's so important. I always try to tell students, I don't care, undergrad, graduate student, start the process of prepping, preparing, and practicing way before you even hear anything about um, an actual interview. So that when that time comes, you've already, you know, you've already been in practice. You're already uh, um, ready. So DR, I have a question. So should we register, like set up the appointment with you through EPAC or we can just email you? With if you yeah, just like I said at the beginning, it would be great if you can schedule through EPAC, mm -hmm. but if that is a, a problem, I, you know, feel free, you can, you know, send me an email. Mm -hmm. It's just like, if you can get through EPAC, then, you know, you can instantly, you know, set up, an, you know, once you see that, you schedule appointment, you're good. Mm -hmm. you know, e email, of course, that's fine. You'll reach me. We'll just have to you know, make sure we kind of figure out, okay, what days are good for you. And then we'll try to uh, work it out that way. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Um, job search resources, um, EPAC and career shift. So these are resources that I think would be helpful. Um, you probably have heard about EPAC, as I said at the beginning, every North Carolina State student has an EPAC account. North Carolina State, uh, EPAC is um, our premier online recruiting system. So this is the system where employers all types of employers send their opportunities and they post them, okay, in EPAC. Like I said here in the first bullet, all enrolled students have an EPAC account. I already mentioned that you can schedule one of the functions is to schedule a, a, an appointment through EPAC. Another thing is to upload <coughs> your document or documents in EPAC. Once you've got your resume ready, or your CV ready, you can upload that in EPAC so that you're in the position now to begin to apply to various postings, okay, in EPAC. And so what I want to do, just real quick, if I if I can, I want to see if I can go to, to EPAC, and I hope I can uh, do this without any kind of issues here. So we're going to see if we can... Okay. Uh, okay. So, kind of make sure we got that. So, yeah, here we go. So, this is EPAC. It might kick me out, but that's right. It, it'll. There's it's no problem. So, this is EPAC. Let's let's go back in. Uh, I got like a student account. 
Okay, so this is this is EPAC. All right, this is the home page. So what I'm going to do is do uh, a search. Here you see the filters here at the top. I know it's kind of small, but you see where it says position type, industry job function, more filters. Okay, so I'm going to click all jobs because I just want to see, okay, the, the listing. You know, so I look down here and it's 1,832 opportunities in EPAC as we speak now. Okay, and so let's say, for example, one way that you could, and, and again, you can use any combination of these to kind of tailor the search for what you're looking for. Keywords, uh, definitely position type, where you can, you, can, you know, you can check more than one if you want. But when you read, it might be like full-time entry level, full-time experience, all right? And then with position type, you might do position type and keyword, and then see what you get. Others might do position type and do one of the other filters and see what, what you get. So one of the things I think I'll try to do, um, let's say, for example, I'm going to go over here. There's industry, there's job function. More filters has the program and majors. So if I click on um, more filters and I look at desired majors, that's all of, of the programs. These are the colleges. Uh, if you look at the arrow to the end, if you want to, you can click on that and then you can check the boxes of the specific programs. I see adult education, education leadership, you can do that. Uh, sometimes it's fine that uh, if you wanted to, you could just check the whole uh, uh, education. So sometimes I'll check education, just the entire college. I hit apply. Now that number jumps down to 147. And so let's say, for example, those of you looking at training and development. So I might type in, let's say training and development. And then I hit enter. And then I got some of these positions here, right? Um, again, here's something that's associate dean, career education, dual enrollment, behavior. So whenever you see these positions, if you click on, let's say, training coordinator, I'm just using this as an example, you click on it, it'll take you to the detail page of that position, right? You look at all of the things that they're looking for. And then over to the right, it'll give you like a, a important dates. So what's the deadline here? The application deadline, December the 4th. Each one has a red apply uh, box. That will give you the instructions of what they want you to do. And in this case, they're saying, go apply uh, at this link. Okay. That's just one example. Another one might be a little bit different. Let's let's look at one of the others. Let's look at the one where we saw, uh, let me see, this behavior technician, let's just look here. Click on that. This one gives you contact information. All of them might not give you contact information. This one does. Still get the detail information. Look at the, uh, where's the uh, deadline, November the 26th. In this case, you hit the apply box. It's saying now, oh, the uploaded document that you have, use that and submit that. Okay. So each one is going to be a little different. Okay. They're going to be a little bit different. Some of the positions listed in EPAC, they want you to apply through EPAC like that when we just saw. Others, they just say, <coughs> well, we're going to give you a link. Or they might say, go to our website. But the bottom line is for you to know that this should be a primary resource, not necessarily the only resource, but it should be a primary resource because these are, um, you know, employers who are seeking North Carolina State students. And it puts you in uh, a special category or a special pool of candidates, okay? So you, you just use the different things. When you look at job function, you might look at job function and you might see some things that will be helpful uh, counseling agency, college, there's uh, what we see, education, teaching, curriculum, development. Use this accommodation. You might use that and a position type and then see what you get. So just kind of play around with it and, and see the different combinations that, are, again, will get you what you're what you're looking for. So that's, that's EPAC, okay? So 
let me um make sure you uh, you get that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the art. Sorry, can you please also show us how to set up the job alerts as well on the EPAC? Job alert. Let me see. I know it's probably been a while since I've I've done that. Um, here you could create a job alert right here. So after you after you plug in your your filters and you you do a search, it's just as simple as just uh, clicking to create a job alert right here and what will happen is those those filters that you used like what i just used i just created like another job alert so what will happen is uh you can send us so every time uh let me see every time let's say periodically there will get a listing of opportunities that are based upon that particular search it'll send you a, an, an email OK, so it kind of gives you like an email of, OK, here's an update of listings based upon uh, the filters that you use um, in order to do the search. OK, so just just use using this um, after you you plugged in your, uh, you know, uh, your filters, you should be able to, uh, to get like um, an email that will alert you to those positions. OK. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um so that's that's EPAC. The next the next thing uh will be uh, let's look at career shift. Career shift uh is a link that you find through via EPAC. It's separate from EPAC. And the way I look at career shift is where EPAC stops, I think career shift picks the ball up because it's more, you know, it's a widespread. This is, uh, as it says here, this pulls jobs uh, from all publicly posted uh, um, uh, positions on the internet into one place, jobs throughout the United States. Okay. So basically, like I said, for, for example, if you were looking at, Let's say, I don't know, let's say if you were trying to relocate to Denver, Colorado, okay, what would be the chance that you would see numerous opportunities in your particular field uh, in Denver, Colorado in EPAC? Probably not. Now, it's not to say that you wouldn't see a couple of opportunities, but when you go to career shift and you plug in that location, you're going to see numerous opportunities. So that's why we purchased career shift as kind of a good way to supplement um, uh, EPAC. Um, you can also, uh, and we'll take a look at that. We have uh, employers there. Um, there's a tab for employers that if you wanted to uh, find those employers in a particular industry and you want to increase your knowledge of who those employers are, you can do that search. And then the thing that I don't think a lot of students love is the potential of gaining information about contacts okay so let's real quickly uh, i want to definitely look at that as well so if we go to the home page click home again if you scroll down here's career shift you see right here so you would click on career shift and click on the the link and i already have it up here so this is career shift and so let's say if we wanted to, here's one uh, example. Let's say if we wanted to look at, um, and I've done a couple of these. Let's say um, instructional designer. Okay, so let's say we want to pull that. And let's say, and, and we'll use an advanced search, but we want to look at those positions in North Carolina. And if you wanted to, if you, those who are interested in doing remote or work from home, you can check that and it'll pull uh, that information. Um, job type, we're gonna say full time. And, and with just that information, we click on search and, uh, oh, it must've kicked me out, I'm sorry. Hold on, let's do that again. It probably was up for a while and just kicked me out. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, advanced search. Try this one more time. Okay, 
Okay. Um, it's full time and yes, you search. Okay, and you see a couple of things. Here's the first one that's like remote with United Health Group. So let's say, and of course, it was, you'll see here at the top how many, there's 137 uh, found. So if you look at this one, of course, if I click here, it'll take me to the detail page, okay? But one of the things, remember I told you that students like is most of the time, not 100%, but most of the time, you can go for each position and you'll see five contacts. If I click on here for United Health Group, I click on here and it takes me to contacts, okay? And that's what, what, what students like to, to see. And you have the chance to drill down uh, um, in finding appropriate contacts. And for each contact, there is a link to their LinkedIn page. So that's good information to use Especially when you're thinking about networking, I'm gonna and I'm gonna touch on a touch base on networking and, and of course the importance of that. And you all know that you all know that, that that's that's very important. But I just wanted to do uh, uh, an example of like a search in EPAC and then show you also how a search uh, would be done in Career Shift. I would take advantage of this particular uh, uh, resource as well um, when you start um, doing like your job search or when you're ready. Uh, to do your job search, okay? So go back to current slide here. So um, so that's um, career shift. So it's EPAC, career shift, other job boards that you might not, uh, that you may be aware of that I think you can get some mileage out of. For those of you, especially if you're looking at um you're looking at a higher ed, and of course you can find higher ed positions via EPAC as well as career shift, but you also have like higheredjobs.com. Some of you might know about this. They have uh, categories administrative and that includes subcategories like adult and continuing ed programs, curriculum design, structural technology and design, tutors, learning resources. Of course they do have uh, categories for faculty, as well as executives, when you're looking at, especially PhDs, we're looking at being uh, deans or, 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 or executive positions like, like that. You got also Higher Ed 360, which as it states here, is a direct link to the university or college's HR job board. It has some of the same uh, categories, faculty, administrator, staff, temporary, okay? So you got higheredjobs.com, higher ed360. There's also insidehighered.com. <clears throat> also for the community colleges at the bottom, you'll see North Carolina Community College, uh, Colleges uh, Jobs. Uh, and they'll give you like a listing of the positions of those uh, um, community college uh, opportunities in North Carolina. Uh, throughout the United States at communitycollegejobs.com here. And for those of you who are looking at using your skills, uh, functional areas uh, within nonprofit organizations, um, idealist.org is a nice resource to use. And you can do used filters in particular areas of, of interest and it'll locate good uh, opportunities for uh, nonprofit uh, uh, um, positions. So I would kind of add this to things like Career Shift and EPAC whenever you start doing your, uh, your job search. And of course, as I said before, networking is key. That's key. Um, I know for a fact, I know for myself, uh, I think about the opportunities or the positions that I gained uh, at the graduate school, and each one was as a result of networking. Each and every last one was a result of that. So, of course, start with individuals you know, friends, classmates, faculty and staff, current supervisors, past supervisors, even even relatives, even family. Okay. The key, though, is for those individuals you know, how many of them, when the time comes for you to start your job search, 
how many of them are aware of that? They know that you're getting ready to start your job search and they have a clear understanding of what types of positions you're looking for. The more that they know that, the better off you are, okay? So that that way, in their day-to-day -day, uh, 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 work or their day-to-day -day, uh, life, anything that may come across their radar that is uh, relevant, then they'll be able to reconnect back with you. And in some cases, maybe even make um, referrals. So it's very important that people who are uh, you're connected with uh, um, and it may not be 100% all of them, but it should be certain ones strategic uh, 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 choices that know and have, uh, are aware that you start your job search and also what you're looking for. They need, that needs to be clear. Also, expand your network. It's fine to connect with the people that you know. Um, ask them about uh, potential contacts who are in your particular field, okay? That's a, another way of expanding your network. And then, of course, we talk about connecting with people that you, that you may not be aware of, uh, that you may not know. Um, and one of the things certainly that comes to mind is LinkedIn, which is, as we know, is a professional networking platform, right? Now, I'm sure all of you have um, a LinkedIn page, um, you know, certainly if not, definitely you want to put one together. Um, in LinkedIn, you got your first level connections. You all know uh, about this, people that you already know. It's kind of like what we just talked about, but through the perspective of link LinkedIn. Um, those uh, people that you already know, that you connect with in uh, LinkedIn, again, how many of them are aware of your goals? Um, and for those individuals, those first level connections, they can help to kind of bridge the gap with others that you may need to connect with. Um, professionals that you may not know, it's very important, and, and, and this is what I mentioned when we looked at the contacts and career shift, is you need to make sure you're strategic and purposeful when it comes to who you choose to contact and why you choose to connect with them, okay? So you, you know that, that needs to be clear. Right, so that hopefully it'll be a successful connection. Now, alumni tool. Some of you may have heard of this. The alumni tool in LinkedIn is an excellent tool to use in connecting with individuals that you may not be aware of. And we're going to kind of run through um, example of how you can um, pull this together. Uh, in the alumni tool in LinkedIn, you can use filters to do a tailored search for the appropriate alumni connection. There's a keyword box, uh, in case you, you don't know, and then there's filters, such as where they live, okay, uh, where they work, what they do, what did they study, what are the skills, or what are their skill sets, okay? If you have the opportunity, and of course this depends upon the settings, you know, each individual, they might have their settings, um, you know, in a different way. But if if you're fortunate enough to be able to have access to their profile so that you can read their summary, read the information, that's great. Um, study their profile. See if there are certain things that stand out about the profile that's impressive to you. That's a highlight. And what you would want to do is whenever you're trying to make a connection, you don't want to just send a naked uh, uh, request to connect. You always need to add a note. Anytime you hit that connect uh, button, it'll ask you to put that, that box will show up and says, you know, ask you if you want to add a note. Yes, you definitely want to add a note because, you know, many of us will get uh, individuals who request to connect with us without a note, I don't know who they might be and, you know, but in this case, yes, it's important to add a note. What is it that you want to add? I think in that space is about 300 characters. Um, in that space, I say to include what I call down here at the bottom, the three C's. Okay, what is it that you have in common with them? 
compliment, and then of course um, request a connection. So when you say in common already, you know this is North Carolina State alumni. So that's one thing. Did they finish um, from your uh, your program? Okay. Uh, are they from your hometown? I'm just kind of looking at examples of what you might have in common. Uh, definitely, they are in a position or field that you're interested in. So all those things are things that you have in common with that contact. And then, like I said before, if you've had a chance to look at their profile, what is it that kind of stands out or something that uh, made an impression and you want to slip that into um, the note? <coughs> Excuse me. And then, of course, professionally request um, the connect. Chances are, with, with that, there's a there's a higher percentage of a chance that that uh, professional will will say yes and 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 want to connect. Okay, and so that at least increases your chances versus just saying, hey, you know, you just send like a a request. So kind of do your homework. Okay, look at what you have in common, compliment them, and then request uh, the connect. Okay, so let's real, real, just real quick, real quick, and then I think we'll almost um, be done. And I will see if if we can do something right quick. Let's see if we can do like a quick. I'm can hoping. you have a question, Dr? Do you uh, have a template or maybe a sample for um, the three C's? Just you know, just so. I I would have to probably come up. Maybe I could come up with something that's sand. Um, like something that's 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 written. It, 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 all it, it's just a very, just an informal uh small paragraph, only about three hundred characters. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I and I trust as long as you've had those three C's, mm -hmm. you, you know, I I, I could probably try to think of a, a, a template, but I don't, it, it shouldn't be too difficult, uh, especially especially as as graduate students because, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, basically that's all you're saying is, is you're introducing yourself and you're saying. Uh, um, um, pretty much understand that uh, you are also a graduate of this, uh, the such and such program. Um, and also, I found out you're, you're also from my hometown. You know, uh, I wanted to reach out to you because I'm, I'm highly interested in the such and such, you know, field. You know, it's kind of, kind of filling the blanks. And, um, and I'm very impressed with some of the work that you've been doing with this uh, whatever project. You know, see, it, all you're just trying to do mm -hmm. is just, you know, introduce yourself as saying, why, why is it that you want to connect? Mm -hmm. You know, just having that information to me as as a, a potential contact, I would probably, yeah, I, I would accept the, the request, you know, mm -hmm. because what you hope to do is lead to an opportunity to connect, maybe mm -hmm. do like an informational interview. And that's what I want to cover in a, um, in a, in the next slide real quick. But if, if there's if I could come up or if I could see like a, a template, there might be something I can send you and um and you can share. Would would that be fine? Yeah, sounds good. Thank oh, you. Oh, 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 okay, okay. All right. So um all right. So what I want to do, let me make sure that I am uh, okay, come on. Okay. Um and just bear bear with me. I'm just trying to um, um as a guide. Uh, oh my I goodness. Have, uh, students have questions. Um Ming also have questions if you have the template for C V or personal statements. Oh here we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will just let, let me um let me just show show this real real quick. NC State. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So here's here's the alumni section for NC State, and see where you have contact. I mean, I'm sorry, the keyword, and here are the filters. So, so let's say if we were looking for, uh, I don't know, let's say if we type in something like um, adult, just, just starting off, let's say if we want to type in 
like adult education and hit and that pushes down to 2,815 alumni. And let's say in that you're looking for those as far as what they do might be community social services. Click on that and it brings out to 383. And let's say you're looking for, you know, as far as the skillful, we're looking for those who are like curriculum and development. Okay. You could do more filters, but then as you're doing that, of course, that's where you're accumulating these. And see, you, I think one of your professors right there, you'll see um, other contacts where you can uh, make the connect, look at their, um, see if you can pull up their profile, you look at their head headliners and, um, and get some potential good contacts, okay? And remember, like I said before, if you click on the connect, you know, you see what it says right here, add a note. That's what we mean right here. And you click on that, and that's where you would go ahead and then you would add um, the note. Okay? So it's just different ways where you could do searches. If you want to do healthcare, type in healthcare. Do do that. Type in um, healthcare. Okay. Look at that. Let's say in healthcare, you're looking for those who are. Uh, in, in education, okay, what they do, looking for those, education within healthcare, but you're looking for those who are working, let's say, at USC um, Health. Let's say you, you've got an interest in that organization and you got that, see here, and then you got a listing of some of those, okay? So, uh, again, I think the alumni tool is, is very helpful and good to use. Um, and and basically, uh, and, and again, I, I get to a question. I just wanted to make sure I, I show, show that. Um, and let me see, and no, right. And make sure, and these were the things I mentioned before, make sure you understand the why. Um, I mentioned informational interview is one reason to make a connection, but I would suggest that informational interview be done early in your academic career. So if you're starting a program, this will be the time where you can reach out and get information through an informational interview because you're getting information about the field, about that particular area, all right? So not only are you gaining knowledge, but you're also establishing a connection, which down the road um, <coughs> may um, yield results. You know, there might be, you know, certain things that come across their radar that they will connect with you about. Another reason is, hey, you're starting your, or before you start your job search, you're not connecting to ask for, okay, do you know about jobs or positions out there? No, no, you're just trying to ask advice for your job search, maybe asking them, you know, how did you, uh, and what what steps did you take as far as your job search? Okay, <laughs> what are some of the things? What would be some helpful things that I need to keep in mind as I complete uh, my program? <clears throat> also, another reason could be, let's say you're interested in an organization, but there's no postings at the time for the time being but you have contact that you want to, uh, what I call plant the seed, you know, communicate your interests in a particular employee before any knowledge of any positions. That's another reason I think to reach out. And then last, I'm sorry. And then last, I would say, then you have to kind of think through this before you do it is, you know, uh, once you are aware of an individual who let's say they are, have a role to play or responsible or uh, responsibility in regards to making a decision about the position. If you know who that individual is, possibly you can send like a, you know, definitely a, a note just to let them know uh, anything else that you might bring to the table. Again, I always say with this one, maybe give this some thought before um, before you, you you act. But it's certainly another way that you can reach out. And then lastly. These are just other ways that you can utilize uh, uh, LinkedIn, as you all know. Follow employers, 
you know, like, share, comment. If there's any particular groups in LinkedIn, participate in those. All uh, and of course, you know about the job postings in LinkedIn. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to 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 share share that. Yes, man, you said man, you had a question. Yes, she actually has two questions. The first one is whether the slides will be available. Oh yes, I, I can I can make that available. Yeah, please. Uh, if you can send it to me, then I can post it along with this recording of the session. Okay. And the second question is about the sample of the CV or personal statement or yeah. Uh huh. What 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 does she what what does she want to know? I think she just want to see the examples of maybe the templates of the specific CV, for example, for the faculty members or people that are looking for jobs in industry, like just to see like kind of this the structure of so that she can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I I have it put. Um, I tell you, I tell you what. Um, let's see. I have this. I just I just don't want to. You know, mm -hmm. as far as just trying to make a, a search, I want to um some of these questions. I want to be able to get that information and then just send send right to you. Mm -hmm. you, you know, because I might not have it like queued up at, yes. at right at this point. So so you want like a a, a template? Yes, and for, the sample for okay faculty. And then also for um okay I could I could do that and uh and I got you um mean and me and, and me and you all all have my email address I I, I sent it to you dr ingram at ncsu.edu so I I will send that me and then if if there's any issues go ahead and and, and email me. And, re and also send a, a reminder as well, okay? So I think you can send it to me, then I can post it to everyone so all students will have access to those information. Okay, okay, I can do that. For, for, yes, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. And, and, and you remind me too, Samanita. Sure, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone has any other questions? Thank you for bearing with me. I was trying to. <laughs> no, thank to... you so much, Dr. You you are still feeling sick, and you have done you know, a wonderful oh. presentation. Very very helpful. I, well, I, I I hope so, and, I, and I'm I'm so sorry to be in this condition, but I know I know this was scheduled, and I wanted to go ahead and and and, and do this so that um, you know um, you know so we can um, get that information out there to you. Yes. So, so thank you for bearing with me. Thank you, Jackie. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank, thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much. Bless your heart. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, the R. So I will. Contact you by email. Then we can get all the slides and stuff. Then I will get it posted for everyone. Do you have any fine. other questions? That would be fine. Nothing from, from my end. I hope you feel better soon, DR. Thank you. Guess Thank you so right. much. This weekend, maybe just block everything, just rest. <laughs> I, I'm going to try. I, I'm going to certainly try. <laughs> Thank, thank you all so much for your patience. Yes. All thank right. You, everyone, take care. Thanks, DR. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. Thank you.